but it's a bit of a silly one on the plate of spiders playing as the green skins against the force of the wood elves and my opponent decided to full on cheese me uh, he read it up almost immediately i didn't even build a list uh, this list is actually about a thousand gold short i wanted to get two nasty skulkers in there and didn't manage to pull it off and uh it's definitely going to be a bit of a silly game so obviously for the green skins this matchup on one hand can be very adv advantageous uh You've got a lot of cheap trash that you can kind of swarm the wood elves with. At the same time, uh, you don't have great tools to counteract uh, kite spam, really. Uh, obviously, wad up spider riders can do rather well against wild riders, but if you, your opponent manages to evade that, you can often find yourself just unable to shut your opponent down. And there's, of course, also the leadership issue. Uh, obviously, green skin leadership is pretty bad, and most of your cheap units, which you need to really deal with uh, enemy skirmish play, are very bad on leadership, um, and so you can't really bring Black Orcs into this matchup. You can try if you want, but it's a bad idea, because Way Watchers especially will tear them a new one. Um, so, uh, you're basically stuck with really low leadership units against a faction that could potentially bring fear, terror, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and of course, Wood Elves do have some nasty units uh, that can tank a lot of missile fires, units like Treeman and whatever. Obviously, we do have Vindictive Glare, which is a great tool, but still, the Wood Elves can definitely tank quite a lot. So, for my build here, rolling with a Wurtzag, obviously the most competitive pick. Uh, he does have Wa, he's got Effigy, uh, we do have Get Back here. Here we go, Fist of Gork, uh, Bonewood Staff, and Oswayly Beast, of course. Then Warpainted Wardsag and Power of the Wa, so he's going to be able to spam a lot of spells. Plus he's an okay Lord in combat, not the most amazing, obviously. But uh, if I need to, say, help out some units, help out some Cav against Wild Riders or something, he could definitely do the trick. Alongside him, two Night Goblin Shamans, both with Vindictive Glare. One is actually, both of them also have the Wander Jet. One is actually kitted out with a full selection of spells, though. He's got Corko Fix It, Itchy Nuisance, as well as Sneaky Stabbing. And um, besides that, pretty cheap unit. One of the cool little things, actually, about Goblin Shamans, though, is that if your opponent, say, tries to engage you in a frontline fight, uh, these guys can apply poison to enemy units, and so they can actually support your frontline somewhat effectively, especially against lower end troops that they can hit kind of consistently. Now, for the rest of this build, well, it's very, very wide, and like I said, we are missing. Two units of Skulkers in here, uh, if we look at the numbers, we've got over a thousand troops as is, a whole bunch of Orc boys, the Warlords boys are in there as well, more Orc boys over there, and then the AP Clooney's Regiment of Renown, these guys are unbreakable, these guys apply Armor Sundering, and together they're a pretty potent force, they've got shields, they've got good amounts of HP, and uh, they can definitely dish out the hurt to lower end uh, Wood Elf troops. On the flanks, we do have the Dev Creepers, as well as four Scoblin Spider Riders, and a single unit of Moon Howlers, decent units all in all, uh, especially Wad Up, they'll do really well against Wolf Calf. And finally, in the back, two units of Doom Divers ready to pick away enemy flyers, enemy cav, enemy skirmishers, and uh, then also two units of Night Goblin Archers as well as the Rusty Errors. So, a whole bunch of DAC up, but, uh, mostly meant to deal with trees, but they'll also be able to zone away uh, lighter infantry potentially. Now, for my opponent, he decided to go for a full on, well, rushy cab build. Now, interestingly, probably a newer player didn't bring Caster. Whereas Lord actually brought the. Uh, Wood Elf Melee Lord, the uh, Male Glade Lord. Uh, he's got Deadly Onslaught as well as Foe Seeker. He does have Banner of the Hunter King as well as Call of the Woods, so full plus 10 melee attack to all units around him, and then Helm of Discord, providing the AoE debuff. There's also a very Chevron of Tree Man over here, which, you know, it's a nuisance. Uh, Vindictive Glare, not the most amazing against heavily armored targets. Uh, I do believe Missile Resist might actually apply to Vindictive Glare, which is a little weird. And uh, Tree Man, obviously, very tough to shut down for green skins. Uh, even if they're shooting, will just take forever to do the trick. On the flanks, my opponent did bring five units of Glade Riders with Hackman Dips, as well as four units of Wild Riders, so definitely a bit of a cheesy shenanigans there. But uh, Glade Riders, they do outrange all green skin shooting, so that is definitely a nuisance, and definitely something we have to watch out for. And this is really one of the reasons I do believe you want to bring artillery into this matchup. I mean, against something like Hagmans, for example, you just can't catch them. Even normal Glade Riders, you just can't really catch them. You can see here, we're immediately going to start picking them off a little bit with our flyers over there. My opponent, though, trying to get in here, be a pain in the rear with his Glade Lord, trying to snipe out Wartzag, and this was perhaps the main trick here, that he was looking to snipe me down with his Glade Lord, but we're, you can see there he's actually shifting fire to the art artillery, but we're going to net him down with Effigy, and then double tap him with Vindictive Glare, which immediately tanks his HP, and with no heals, this guy's going to be in a bit of a pickle here, he's going to be forced to reconsider and flee, and so we've removed a Glade Lord from play pretty effectively, my opponent's going to be able to force the back off here, and uh, stay away, which is really important. In the uh, artillery just pounding away at the Glade Riders, as long as I zone them away, my opponent can't do too much damage. Unfortunately, he's actually getting some shots on my Doom Diver because I let him get too close, didn't zone away correctly. Uh, we finally are doing so, but I am going to lose a Doom Diver over here. Uh, you can see it's actually gun has been knocked out over there. But we are able to reposition a little bit, which is definitely nice. 
In the meantime, the big tree over here trying to close the gap, immediately getting hit by volleys of armor shuttering fire as well as night goblin fire. Uh, that's going to be debuffing him a whole bunch, making him much less effective. And uh, over time, he'll just get whittled down, and that's the main goal. That said, big misplay here on my part. I should have taken all my infantry, pivoted to this flank, and sort of moved to engage my opponent in a head on Slugfest. Unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. Uh, and you can see he's actually able to sweep through with his wild riders, decimating my front line. You can see the, the boys over there and the spider riders routing completely. And before my calf can get in there, there's being a full there's a full route going on. Now we do try to cast the Goracle, fix it over here, snaring these guys a little bit, but it doesn't slow them enough. We do get a wall off though. In the meantime, the Warlords boys here taking one for the team and pursuing these Glade Riders off the field, or at least pressuring them away. In the meantime, though, the Glade Lord is chipping away. I'm not entirely sure what he's popping shots at. Perhaps Ward Sag, perhaps one of the Night Goblin Shamans. Definitely not a bad choice. Over here, the Wild Riders are going to get caught out. Now, obviously, Death Creeper is not meant to fight in melee, but their stats are passable, especially with the Wah. Uh, and they do have Poison, of course, which is debuffing these guys in melee. And in the meantime, you can see the Wild Riders are getting torn apart. Ward Sag is in the pits. And he's applying his buffs and bonuses to his troops, which is really nifty. Now, Helm of Discord is going down on my boys, which is definitely a bit of a nuisance. But we are able to counter it with an Eerie Go, making my boys just that much more effective. And the Wild Riders are slowly but surely being driven down. You can see the Glade Lord there taking a Vindictive Glare to the face, chunks down, and forced to flee. And the Wild Riders definitely have done a pretty good job. Uh, but Ward Sag is still in the pits, as are the, these Orc boys and some of these... Um, some of these uh, Warlords boys, or not Warlords boys, uh, AP Clooney's bogging these guys down. And obviously, as long as they're poisoned and debuffed and getting shot in the back, probably by their own boys, it's definitely going to be a bit of an issue. And uh, I do apologize. My throat is still a little scratchy, so i just come down with something. I've been sick and sick, and it's really bad. Uh, but these Wild Riders here are now being removed from play. These guys completely routed. The, the Elf Lord completely removed from play by Vindictive Glare and some Doom Diver shots. And the Doom Divers in the meantime really pounding down these Glade Riders. And my opponent. Not really able to remove the Warlords boys from play, so definitely a good little win for us. As we push off, and uh, you can see the Wild Riders finally kind of buckling under the pressure. Uh, these guys did try to push into our backline, get in on our artillery, but last second we intercepted with Spider Riders. Not an ideal situation, but what can you do? Uh, the main point right now is just to bog these guys down, prevent these Wild Riders from getting in. Uh, and my opponent perhaps make a bit of a misplay here, going in against Ward Sag in this pocket instead of taking these Wild Riders into the artillery, which is still doing a lot of damage to Scav, but... Um, He's also had a bit of a lapse of micro here, so the Glade Riders getting pounded by my archers, which is not something you should allow. Green Skin Archers have such short range that this should never happen, really, in my opinion. Um, but at this point, it's basically just throwing my boys into the fray, zoning my opponent off, and his army is going to start suffering army losses because it's just taking so much damage. The Tree Man fell here to the mass archer fire, uh, just lying there far from home, and that is game. So, a bit of a fun little 1,000 gold down matchup. Um... It was a bit of a silly one. Uh, I haven't been able to really play too much till the war lately. I've just been very ill and busy with real life, as you guys know. And uh, So I don't have too much content, unfortunately. But uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed. It was a bit of a silly one. Uh, the build honestly works. If, if you want to uh, go more competitive, obviously, add Nasty Skulkers. The fact that I didn't bring them here, well, that's just because I ran out of time. Um, but they help a lot. Now, you guys think that Night Goblin Shaman is definitely cheesy, and it definitely is, but it's a huge boost against Wood Elf Cheese. Dealing with a lot of Wood Elf Flyers can be incredibly frustrating if you don't bring Vindictive Glare, because uh, Wood Elf just have to kite the hell out of you. They can bully your lords. Uh, if your opponent, for example, brings a Glady and um, or a Glade Lord or some Waste Stalkers and decides to chip away at Word Sack, there's basically nothing you can do, very little you can do. Um, it's definitely a bit of a rough situation. That's why I personally like to bring Vindictive Glare to at least shut down those lords and so in my opponent away, if they bring a uh, spell singer on a horse or a uh, eagle, or dr if they bring a dragon, uh, it's just so good against any of those targets. Otherwise, though, um, all in all, I just say it's a decent build. Uh, the Doom Diver is definitely a nice little important unit in this build, I think, as well. Uh, otherwise, you should have the mass to bomb your opponent if they go infantry heavy. With a wall, obviously. Um, regardless, uh, Good game to my opponent, obviously, but for a silly build, not necessarily the most competitive. Uh, if you wanted to go more competitive, I would definitely recommend bring a caster, first of all. Uh, but obviously, probably bring some foot shooting, some way watchers, or some you put scouts, or uh, units like that. And you definitely don't need this many Glade Riders with Agbane tips. Uh, just one or two will do. And uh, probably no chevrons on the tree. You don't need seven chevrons on a tree, man. That's just my two cents, though. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a silly build. 
Um, and yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you found it entertaining and uh, enjoyed, if you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions, don't hesitate to put them down, and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. I do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.